Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back at the museum. We've waited nearly five years to make this video for you. It's the unboxing of a new old stock Technics RSDC-10. We already have a new old stock sealed unit here at the museum. Of course, we didn't want to open that one. So it took us five years to wait for a second unit that we recently found to arrive here. And like you know, at the museum, we want two of everything, one on display that is working and one in box, preferably sealed. So this is the second unit that we will unbox today. We will fully restore it and we will show the results in this video. It's always exciting to receive something that has never been opened. Of course, you look at the seams here, whether it's you know, been opened for taking photographs, which happens a lot, but this seems a unit that has never been opened. There are some cosmetic blemishes. Theoretically, there could be a brick inside, so it's always a little bit scary, but this looks from the pictures that we've seen, and of course what we see here, it really looks unopened. So the serial number, as you can see here, is not as decisive as it is with Philips, where um, it usually starts with MZ and then you start with a 92, 93, 94, which is the year it was produced. This is inconclusive in what year it was produced, MY21A01465. I'm pretty sure the people at Technics know when this machine was made, but we don't have any data on that. Okay. So the manual, the tape, the cables, remote control, and even the batteries are all in there. So it looks like this unit was indeed never opened. It usually came with one Panasonic DCC, in this case a D60 minutes, and the analog cable, no digital cables were included. Warranty card, Need some space. is a 110 volts so i believe it is a us model yes 120 40 watt ul listing so this is an american model now we have done several restoration videos where we replace all the smd capacitors but as you know shown in a previous video since six months or so we have a replacement read write board and in our opinion that is the way to go because even in a new all stock unit like this, the capacitors will have leaked and there will be acid 
on the boards, including the read write board. So technically, if you plug this in, this might work. It will not work for very long because the damage of this acid leaking from these capacitors will damage the three layer board. So rather than trying to restore it and get all that acid out of these boards and potentially causing a failure six months down the road, we now upgrade it to this board for several reasons. The capacitors will not leak. This board is very stable. We just have to replace both TDAs on both sides. And Jeroen from Soundtraces has even upgraded this. This will sound better, at least on the analog side, because the analog adjustment and the circuitry has been fully automated. It's been copied from a later generations down the road in 1995 and 1996 from a DCC 730 or 951. So this is fully automated and this is plug and play. It will play immediately. The only thing that we have to check is the adjustment of those two variable resistors from the original board in order to write the data to the tape. The audio board PZ03 will still need a recap, but it's less troublesome than this one. This is the Achilles heel that we need to get fixed and we now have perfect solution for that. Okay, let's open it up. The PZ03 audio board is underneath this metal plate. So we have to remove two screws to get to that. And then it just slides out. This is directly connected with a flat cable to the read write board. So we have to recap these seven SMD capacitors for sure, because for this board, we do not have a replacement. Again, we will copy a link to the previous video where we've done this. This is the same for a DCC 900, Marans 82, Marans 92, and also for the Technics and the Panasonic RSDC10. So now that the front is loose, so now we have four more screws that holds the whole block. And there it is. So now the block is separated. They had both pinch rollers and on the back, we have the old read-write board. And this is going to be replaced with the new read-write board. Now we measure both resistors. This one is 27 and this one is 43. And then we copy those values to the new board.
This new connector is also a breeze. It's much easier than the original one. So this is the area where we just removed the capacitors and you can clearly see here the black residue. This is all the acid leaking. It becomes visible because you heat it up. So this is going to go into an ultrasonic bath with a cleaner and then we put new SMD capacitors on it and then we can move forward. We've also replaced the belts and the, the pinch rollers, which is once we're at it. Yeah. We have results. Next phase is, is that of course we will test analog cassette and make some recordings. Yep. It was extremely nice to be working on a fantastic machine like this and this is on the way to a new enthusiast and every restoration we end with a official Dr. DCC seal and this will also go in our database where you can follow if your device has been restored. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Thank you.